the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Never-ending inroads of crime against society are counteracted only by the never-ending vigilance on the part of law enforcement agencies. On June 24th of last year, a transcontinental train arrived at the railroad station. One of the passengers was Leroux Merced, courier for an international gem corporation. Carrying only a small valise, Merced rented an automobile and drove away from the station. He did not know he was being watched and followed by Larry and Margaret Baker. Through the duplicity of a minor employee of the Gem Corporation, the Bakers had full information about Merced, his mission, and his cargo. A cargo worth $200,000. The entire Mahar Gem Collection. Hello. I'm sorry to bother you. I have the room next door. I've uh, run out of matches. Can I trouble you for a light? Why, certainly. Won't you come in? I guess you don't want the light after all. Turn around and stand still. Check his suitcase. Before you waste any more of your time, let me tell you that what you're looking for is not here. Where is the collection? Where you can't possibly get your hands on it. I think you'll tell me where it is. I didn't say I wouldn't. You must be an amateur of this game, my friend. Or you would know that those gem collections aren't ever on the same train with the courier. We'd like to be convinced. Keep looking, Margaret. My advice to you is that you try and save yourselves a jail sentence by getting out of here as quickly as possible. I don't like advice. That's right, mister. Besides, my husband's a very impatient man, so you better tell him where it is. Your reasoning, Pa, should tell you that no one man would risk carrying the Mahar collection. No, no, don't shoot. Hit him. Hit him. Hello, operator. Get me the highway patrol. Hurry, hurry, operator. I've looked every place. He must have told the truth. I don't think he did. We'll take his car keys and drive him out of here in his car. You follow on ours. We'll take him out to the house. When he comes to, I'll make him talk. Give me a hand. Did you see the woman hit the guy with the pistol? Yes, he went down like a sack of flour. It was terrible. Now, where are you now? I'm in a phone booth at the motel. I can see Mr. Merced's car from here. Wait. The man and woman are bringing him out of the room now. They're putting him in the car. He's either unconscious or dead. What'll I do? Get the license number of the car, but don't try and stop me. You might get hurt. I checked the license number of every car that registers here. They're driving out. That man and woman, they're taking Mr. Merced away. Look, lady, we can't do a thing without the license number. Now, please, simmer down and take it easy, but get that license number, will you? Here it is. It's 5P142. I didn't see what year. Now, we'll be right there.
Tibson. Call all the units in the area. Tell them to stop the car and hold the occupants for questioning on possible kidnap and murder charges. Call the DMV. See who wants the car. Come on, Ken, let's go. Headquarters to 3446. Larry, mm -hmm. when we get the collection, can I keep a brooch or a ring or... Not one thing. You always want to keep something from every job we pull. When are you going to realize that this is a business we're in? We're not just cheap crooks. Mm -hmm. well, there's nothing cheap about this coat, honey. I would have my head examined for letting you keep it. It's as hot as a two-dollar pistol. Anyway, we haven't got the collection yet. Mm -hmm. Well, if I know my Larry, you'll get it. Oh, possibly. If he ever comes to... Why'd you have to hit him so hard? Well, he was hitting you, baby. Oh, okay, baby. Just a little square cut diamond, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe. We know who you are. We've gone through your papers. Your Merce said from Holland, you've got the collection. Now, what'd you do with it? When I took the job of delivering the Mahar collection, I assumed the risk of running into someone like you. Well, you better do what he says, mister, because, like I told you before, my husband's a very impatient man. As I told you before, you have no chance of getting your hands on it. Suppose we declare you in. How'd you like to help us? That's not what I'm paid for. And suppose I put a nice little bullet hole right there. That would be a very poor substitute for a $200,000 gem collection, wouldn't it? If you pull that trigger, you'll make yourself and the lady murderers. And you'll be no closer to the Mahar collection than you are right now. His name is LaRue Merced. The only registration I have on him is Amsterdam, Holland. You ever seen him before? No, I didn't. Now, please try and think. Can you describe the man and the woman that took him away? Well, the man was tall. At least he appeared to be. And the woman wore a full-length mink coat. I never did see her face up close. Though. Where are they from, you know? No. Anybody been in this room since they left? No, I'm sure of that, because I thought you'd want to check for clues. You do want to, don't you? Yeah, thanks. Well, this Merced must have had something that man and woman really wanted. Sure looks like it. I don't think they found it, though. That's probably why they dragged him out of here. Well, this is Matthews. I'm at the Sunset Motel, room 11. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the manager said she heard the man yell, don't shoot, hit him. Evidently, they didn't find out what they wanted to know, at least not yet. Anything in there? No, I don't think so. Nothing important. Matthews. Hello, Mr. Matthews. A motor vehicle bearing license number 5, Paul 142, now driven by suspects in motel robbery and kidnapping, was rented at the railroad station about one hour ago. A rentee carried Holland driver's license. Name LaRue Merced. Address Hoogstraat Hotel, Hoogstraat, Amsterdam. All right, check all the railroad stations. Find out all trains that came in one hour before Merced hired the car. See if you can find out what town he came from. Yeah, be sure and check back with him. After that, contact the Hoogstadt Hotel in Amsterdam. Get me everything you can on Merced. Right. Well? Couldn't get a thing out of him. You didn't kill him? Nah, no, he's okay. But maybe he'll be more cooperative when he comes to this time. Let's take a look through this stuff again. Uh -huh. Dutch driver's license, traveler's checks, and a passport. An express receipt. Say, wait a minute. Didn't he say that the courier and the collection never traveled on the same train? That's what he said. Now, this is an express receipt for a package shipped from New York a week ago, consigned to LaRue Merced at the express office here. Sure. That's why he went to the motel near the depot, to wait for the package to arrive and then pick it up. That's about it. You know, 
With all this identification, I should be able to pick up that package myself. Oh, well, that's taking a big chance. <laughs> it's a big haul. Now, wait, wait, wait. Let me think this thing out. Okay, thanks. Hey, hold on. Well, I couldn't find anybody that saw the man and the woman. Uh, so far, we just got the report from Holland. Merced maintains a residence at the Hoekstraat Hotel, and they say he's in the States now. Well, what about the railway station? Nothing yet. Be sure and tell the lab boys our prints are on that form. Oh, yeah. It's a sure thing the clerk wouldn't know Merced on site. Chances are the jewels aren't due, or he wouldn't have taken a room. Well, what about him? Oh, we may need him for a while. Would it be safe to leave him here? It wouldn't be safe to leave him anywhere. He might get away. We'll take him with us, put him in the trunk of the car. What about the rental car? We'll take it to the next garage we see. Leave it for a tune-up. Cops will never think of looking for it there. It'll be a long time before it's reported. Let's get him. Well, come on. Merced left New York five days ago. Carried no baggage except large suitcase. Gave New York Hotel as address. I'd contact the hotel. See when he arrived in New York. Also find out if he made any phone calls or had any visitors. We're on our way in. Let's go. like a charm. I hope we have as little trouble getting rid of Merced. <laughs> Larry. What? Suppose there's enough air in the trunk? Oh, sure, sure. When the job's done, we'll drop him off somewhere where it's safe. Come on, get him. While the highway patrol searched in vain for the rented car and some clue to the whereabouts of Leroux Merced, Larry and Margaret Baker were heading toward the railroad station with Merced locked in the trunk of their car. Any report from the New York Hotel? Yes, Merced checked in about a week ago. No known visitors, three telephone calls on uh, file. One long distance call to the city. What number did he call? Well, no permanent record of calls made by guests is kept at the hotel. Well, the telephone company should have the records. All right, Ken, you check it. What about the rented car? All negative. Have the boys keep looking until they find it. Great. Right. Oh, hello. This is Sergeant Williams of the Highway Patrol. Could you help us out with some information on a long-distance call made from a New York hotel? Attention, all units. Express office. This is LaRue Merced speaking. I'm expecting a package from New York. Has it arrived yet? Just a second, I'll check. Uh, what is that name again? Merced. LaRue Merced. Thank you. Oh, we're getting hot. Merced made a call from New York to an armored car company. I checked with them. Huh? Well, they received a confidential order from Merced to have an armored car stand by. He'll meet the car at the express company office when he goes there to pick up the jewels. Get me the express company. Have they heard from Merced today? Not yet. Hello, Mr. Merced. Mm -hmm. The package is here. Good. I'll be over in 30 minutes to pick it up. Goodbye. Mr. Merced. Yes? Did you have a pleasant trip? Yes, yes, very pleasant. Express office. This is Matthews, Highway Patrol. 
Have you delivered a package to a man called Merced today? No, but I just had a call about the package, but the man who called wasn't Mr. Merced. Oh, how do you know? We were giving a code for identification, and when the man called, I asked him the code question, and he gave me the wrong answer. Is he coming to pick up the package today? Yes. He said he'd be here in 30 minutes. Look, the man who's going to call for it is probably armed and dangerous. Now put the package where you can't find it, and stay out of the way till we get there. Yeah, that's right. We got 30 minutes. We get there first, we can pick up the man, the woman, and find Merced at the same time. Go on, let's go. The suspect and the Merced kidnapping is going to pick up a valuable package at the express office. We're going to intercept. Have all units around the area. Tell them not to move in unless we need them. Right. Let's roll. Attention, all units in the B-12 area. I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Where's the package? Right here, sir. Where am I sitting, New York City? We'll leave it on the counter. When the man comes to pick it up, if he's got the right identification, give it to him. But, Mr. Matthews, I can't deliver the package to someone who doesn't satisfy the requirements of the code. Well, you better fix one up. You can't deliver. But do it in a hurry. There's a man's life at stake. Yes, sir. Merced. Merced? Yes. I talked with someone here over the phone. Oh, yes, about a package that was consigned to you, wasn't it? That's right. I'll have to have some identification, Mr. Merced. Well, the best proof I can show you is a receipt here from New York. Oh, I see. This has your signature on it. If you'll sign below your other signature, I'm sure that'll establish identification. Thank you, Mr. Merced. Here's your package. The woman, let's tag along, see if they both lead us to Merced. Headquarters. Headquarters by. Suspect in two tone blue sedan. License number 6 John 250. Repeat, 6 John 250. Traveling west on Cranford Drive, 1300 block. Object of pursuit to find its destination. Cover, but don't intercept. 10 4? 10 4. Proceed west along Cloverdale Avenue. Stand by for contact with 2150. 10 4? 10 4. A headquarters to 3614.
Let's go inside and have a look. Larry, what about Merced? Oh, we'll worry about him in a minute. It's been a long time since I've seen $200,000. You go around the back and stay out of sight. I'll see if I can find out what happened to Merced without making him suspicious. Somebody's coming up the front walk. It looks like a cop. He's alone. I can handle it. Who is it? Matthews, Highway Patrol. I want to ask you a few questions. Let him in. I'd like to see Mr. Merced. I'm Merced. What can I do for you? The company hadn't heard from me. They're worried. They wanted us to check. You found me. What now? I don't know if I can see your identification card. I'll be on my way. Certainly. Thanks. Now your passport. I want to take a look at the picture. Merced's in the trunk of that car. You better take your men and get out of here. I'll fill him full of lead. How do I know you're telling the truth? Merced, if you want to live, you better make a lot of noise. Now you're satisfied? Larry, more cops in front. You better take your men and beat it. Why don't you use your head? Right now you're wanted for robbery. Kill Merced, it's going to be murder. The only murder is going to be you. Now get out of here. Okay, you win. Get in the car, but don't leave. Get ready to come out shooting. I'm hit. Don't shoot. All right, bring him in. All right, take it easy now. Where's the collection? The express office. Want to go down and pick it up? Thanks. All right, come on over here. Be careful with my coat. Don't worry, it'll be in cold storage too. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, reckless driving doesn't determine who's right, only who's left. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.